Hey everyone, how is it going and welcome to my old school RuneScape Calphite Queen solo guide. So recently the Calphite Queen's draft table got an update, so I kind of figured now would be an appropriate time to make a solo guide, so that way if you guys want to go test out the new drops, you know how to do it effectively. The Calphite Queen is a level 333 boss that is located in the Calphite layer that can be found in the desert. Minimum stats to solo the KQ is 80 plus on all your melee stats. Recommended, however, is 90 plus on all your melee stats and 90 plus range as well, which is not necessarily needed, but having range does make for faster kills. 70 prayer is also highly recommended to use piety, and uh, being on a Calphite Slayer task, which does count for Calphite Queen, does also help quite a bit. The notable rare drops are the Dragon 2-Ander, Dragon Chain Body, Elite Clues, and a KQ Pet. Um, some of the notable new drops on our drop table are stuff like 25 noted Renars, 25 noted Snapdragons, um, some Battle Staffs, stuff like that. There's pretty decent new drops, but those are the uh, the most notable drops. Alright, so take, let's take a look at our first gear setup. This is going to be just the straight melee setup. This setup is what you're going to use if you are not on a Slayer task and you do not have fairly high range. This is just the straight Varax setup. Now, the reason why you want to use Varax here is because on Calphite Queen's second form, she actually does Prey Melee. And the set effect of full Varax is that it has a chance to hit through Prayer. So it's actually pretty necessary if you're not using range to actually bring full Varax. Unless you're on a Slayer task, that's a bit different. But this is pretty much the setup you want. So you have full Varax, a Fury, Bandos Boots, uh, Barrow's Gloves, sorry, I couldn't think of the name, Barrow's Gloves, Fire Cape, and a Berserker Ring Eye. Now, I know not everyone's going to have all this stuff. So, obviously, you can swap the Berserker Ring Eye out with a Ring of Life, and you can swap a Fury with a Glory, stuff like that. Um, the reason why I'm wearing Bandos Boots over Dragon Boots is because at Calphite Queen, it uses both Mage and Range. You're going to pray Mage, so you want as high range defense as you can. And Bandos Boots have significantly more range defense than Dragon Boots do. And the extra strength bonus from D-Boots doesn't really help that much, so... From what I've found, Bandos Boots are much more useful here. In your inventory, we've got a Super Set, an Anti-Poison, a couple of Prayer Potions, a House Tab, a couple of Ropes, and Sharks. Now, this is not the actual inventory you're going to be bringing. I'll kind of show you, basically, you know, how to actually go about doing this, and it's going to change how your inventory is actually set up. But this is just, like, some base item that you're going to need. So, anyway, let's go into another setup. Alright, so here's the second setup. This setup is going to be using both melee and range, so you're going to need relatively high range to do this setup. Um, this is also the setup you want to use if you're on a Slayer task, so basically, what your setup is going to be is a melee setup that isn't using Varax, because you're not going to be using melee when it's praying melee, so you don't actually need the full Varax set effect. So what I'm wearing is a Varax Helm, Fury, full Bandos, Barrel's Gloves, a God Sword, Ava's Accumulator, Bolts, and a Berserker Ring Eye. So again, basically the main idea is to maximize your range defense. And believe it or not, Bandos actually has higher range defense than the Barrow's Armor. So if you have if you have um, Bandos, it's very, very good here. Um, I realize, again, not all of you are going to have this gear. So if you don't have Bandos, you can replace it with Torags. Torags has almost the same defense, so Torags is a great replacement. And if you don't have a God Sword, um, you can replace it with... Well, to be honest, actually, if you don't have a God Sword, then you might actually still want to wear full Varax for the um, the melee part. A God Sword is very, very good here because Calphite Queen is weak to crush. So if you don't have a God Sword, you can probably stick with using full Varax for the melee part, even though it's not praying melee. It'll still work very, very well. And then our inventory, I have an Armital Chest Plate, an Armital Crossbow, an Armital Crossbow, an Odium Ward, a Super Set, a Ranging Potion, a couple of Prayer Pots, House Tab, Ropes, and Sharks. Um, replace anything you don't have. For, for example, if you don't have an Armoral Chest Plate, replace it with God, Dehyde, or Carols. Armoral Crossbow can be replaced with a Rune Crossbow. And an Odium Ward can be replaced with a DFS or a Crystal Shield or something like that. So, anyway guys, this is two basic setups. Again, if you are on a Slayer task, replace the Varax Helm. With a Slayer Helm, and apart from that, here are your two basic setups. So if you have high range, make sure you're using a setup like this, and uh, just use the best gear that you can. Again, I know I'm using, like, really high tier gear, so, but uh, anyway, basically, depending upon your stats, just choose the setup that is right for you, and uh, let's head over to the Shanty Pass Bank. 
Okay, so once you've made it to Shanty Pass Bank, you're going to want to load up on ropes and shanty passes. So just trade with this uh, shanty guy, buy some ropes, and um, buy some shanty passes. You're going to need a lot of both of these when you're soloing, so I'm just going to grab a few here, and then I'm basically going to run you through how you do this. So the first thing that I'm going to go through with you is the quote-unquote shark trick. Now what you do is, is because you need a shanty pass in order to get through the entrance of the, the gate right here, what you do is, is before you're actually going to leave, you go through with two shanty passes. You go through, you drop a shark, you go back in, you pot up, and then you go back through, and this shark will replace that shanty pass. So it's pretty useful. Anyway, that being said, once you're at the bank, you're actually not going to take your pots with you, and I'll show you why. So, before I leave, I like to drink a dose of stamina potion. So if you have stamina pots, drink one. If not, it's all good. And then drink one dose of the rest of your potion. So I'm going to drink one dose of my supers and my ranging potion. Then I'm going to bank these. So grab my anti-poison, couple of prayer potions, one house tab, one shanty pass, two ropes, and then the rest sharks. And then I'm good to go through the entrance. So once I go through again, that shark will now be in my inventory because it replaced that shanty pass. And now we're fully potted up and we still have a full inventory of sharks. It's kind of important to do this because Calfight Queen does a ton of damage. Like even with my stats and gear, I will get hit quite a bit. So on the way, set your quick prayers to protect item, piety, and protect from magic. Or if you don't have piety, just nothing at all. Just uh, leave the shanty pass and run straight west till you see this thing. Use a rope on the tunnel entrance and then you can climb down. Now you have to run through the Calfight layer. It's not too long. I mean, it gets a little tedious, but it's not too bad. So just kind of follow the path along. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys two different methods, I guess. First of all, will just be like the standard way of killing it. And then the second one will be the quote-unquote flinching or the safe spot if I can get it to work properly. Um, I'm going to show the melee and range method. I'm not going to show the Varax method because the Varax method is the exact same concept as what I'm doing right now, except without the range part, so... Just carry on along the path, making your way around. Make sure you have your quick prayer set at this point. And once you get there, right around this corner, make sure again your quick prayers are set. And then there will be another little entrance here. Use the rope on it. Hopefully there isn't someone down here. That would be a bit awkward. Now set you, if you're using a god sword, set it to smash. Because again, it is weak to, um, to crush attacks. Okay, you can be anywhere around here. So I'm just going to run for a little bit. And there it is. So once I attack it, I'm going to run under it. That is the key to not taking a lot of damage here. Turn your run energy off and hit it once and then walk under. That's pretty much all you have to do. Um, you will still obviously take damage, but by doing this hit and walk under method, it's one hit to one hit. So every time you hit it, it also only hits you once rather than you getting hit multiple times. So this is a pretty, pretty useful method if you're just killing it the standard way. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's... It's a pretty simple boss. There's nothing really special to do other than just to kill it, walk under it after every hit and stuff. Um, you will take a lot of damage. I know Calfight Queen is usually thought of as an easier boss because it's like it's been in the game for so long. But to be honest, Calfight Queen is one of the hardest bosses because you take so much damage. Like it's almost impossible to get two kills a trip unless you're flinching it, which I will show you in a little bit. But even with like max stats and stuff on a Slayer task, you really can only get one kill per trip, so... Nothing really else to talk about, I guess. I mean, I'll just carry on killing this. I'll probably start, you know, showing you guys the recording again once I'm on the second phase. Okay, there we go. I just hit it down to the second phase. Once this happens, if you have a range set up, switch to range. Turn on Eagle Eye and Steel Skin. And you're going to do the exact same method where you hit it and walk under it. Now, one tip for this is to put it on accurate because... Um, if I was standing there just, you know, taking tanking damage, hitting it once every time, then I would want to put it on rapid, but because I'm hitting it and then walking under and I have that delay of my hits, I may as well put it on accurate, because, well, obviously, it makes you more accurate and it doesn't really matter if you have it on rapid or not because you're, you know, taking that delay anyways. And again, this is the exact same method as before, just hit it and walk under until it is dead. Nothing really else to talk about, so I'll, uh, I'll be back when it's dead. Alright, it is just about dead. It's got about 12 HP left. This hit should do it once I actually hit it. So this is actually a pretty good kill as far as supplies left. Generally, I don't have this many sharks left. And uh, down it goes. Let's see what we get. 
And we get two papaya tree seeds and some brews. So that's obviously not the best drop. Um, there, a part of the new drop table with KQ is that you always get a food drop along with your normal drop. So my normal drop was two papaya seeds and my quote-unquote food drop was the one Ceridomen brew. So that's pretty much the basic idea of killing it normally. I'm going to try and set up the flinch method. It's not the easiest to set up, but I'm going to attempt to show you. I might have it set up now, maybe. Not really, kind of. I'm kind of getting it to work. Okay, so as you can see right now, Calphite Queen is surrounded by her minions. Now, I can't always get it to... I think I've got it properly set up now. I think I do. Okay. So as you can see, Calphite Queen will get surrounded by her minions. And when this happens, Calphite Queen actually can't move. I've got it stuck between the wall and the minions. So now, Cal now KQ can't actually move. So I can turn my prayer off and everything's all good. Now what I'm going to do is hit it and then walk back under. Oh, I didn't walk back under. Oops. So I'm going to hit it and walk back under, right? Now I'm going to wait a while. I'm going to wait a while until KQ's hit bar goes away. Okay, now both of our hit bars are away. I can hit it again and walk under. And that's it. That's literally all you have to do with this flinching method. It's pretty difficult to set up because these things take a while to spawn and whatnot. But if you can get it to work where the minions get around KQ and you can get it up by the wall, all you have to do is hit it and then walk back under. And wait a while. So I'm going to stand here until the hit point bar goes away. And once that happens, I can hit it again. And that's literally it. So you can kill Calphite Queen without taking any damage. You will have to use some food while you are luring it. And to be honest, it's pretty inconsistent. It's very, very difficult to get the minions to actually spawn and surround it sometimes. But once you can get it set up, you can easily get a kill without using any food. And uh, this is slower, however. Obviously, the way that I killed it first... It's a lot faster than this because you have to wait like the 5 seconds or whatever it is until the he the health bar goes away. But uh, yes, fun fact, there is a Calphite Queen safe spot if you can get it set up properly like this. Well guys, that's going to be it for this guide. I hope you guys all did enjoy today or found it useful. If you did, feel free to, le feel free to leave a like and uh, I'll see you guys all later. Thanks for watching.